Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're getting on with the next part of our LT50 project. Um, I'm gonna show you how to set up the front steering. Now, um, I will show you how to change the ball joints because obviously that was kind of the next tutorial in the in the series, but uh, with this one, there's just nothing wrong with these ball joints. They're in perfect condition. Um, so I just can't justify changing them for no reason. So I'll show you how to change them. I'll show you how to set up your steering and to set up the tracking, um, which is really simple. All you need is a tape measure and uh, yeah just remember this quad is going to be raffled off once it's all done so make sure you hit the subscribe and um, to stay tuned for what's going to happen with that so um yeah let's get into it and if you get value from this video hit the like button and subscribe to support this channel Right then guys, so the first thing I've done is obviously I've taken the back mud guard off just to make it a bit easier so I can put it up on its end. Um, I find it much easier to work on with them like this. So the first thing we're going to do with this quad is we're going to make sure there's no major play because there's nothing worse than trying to set this tracking up and you've got play in something. So um, I've actually already done a video on how to replace, obviously check for play and replace the wheel bearing. Um, I've also done how to check for play and how to replace the bushes in the kingpin. Um, obviously the next thing now is the steering linkage so i strongly recommend you check them videos out they're both down in a, actually all the videos from this project will be down in the description so make sure you check them out as well um, because obviously you want to take out any play before you go and do this because obviously any sort of play in there is going to send your tracking out so and it's going to be quite pointless setting it up um, if you've got that and if they're really cheap and easy things to replace um, the kingpins were a bit awkward I had to ream the bushes out a little bit but it's the way it is when you buy uh, aftermarket parts sometimes so um, yeah just take keep that in mind before you start doing this so if you wanted for example to replace one of these ball joints now there is a left and a right hand threaded ball joint and then what we basically got is two lock nuts that lock it to this center piece here it's kind of like a big nut with two opposite threads so how it basically works is when we loosen these two nuts off obviously remember one will be left hand and one will be right hand thread and um, what we're going to do is when we turn when we rotate this center nut or center piece of shaft here what's going to happen is because they're two opposite threads as we screw it one way it's going to lengthen the bar and when we screw it the other way it's going to shorten the bar so ideally what you're basically doing is you're adjusting the distance between the bottom of the steering shaft and obviously the hub or sorry the kingpin arm so um, what you're doing then is you're adjusting the angle of the wheel so what we're going to do is basically um, set this up so that obviously by adjusting them two rods so just to keep that in mind just so you know it works now if you were to go and replace these ball joints all you've got to do is basically crack off this lock nut remove the nut off this shaft now the shaft on on here it's a 14 mil nut but they are known to just spin when you try to undo them so um, what, all you need to do is take a 12 mil spanner there's a, a little lock on the back here you lock a 12 mil spanner behind it and then obviously a 14 mil spanner on the nut and you can go ahead then and uh, unwind that nut and then remove it and then obviously once you've got the ball joint off you can just wind it out and replace it or if you're doing the two obviously do the same on the bottom of the steering steering shaft and uh, take it off and put it in a vice or whatever or just do it on the floor and you can replace them two ball joints the only thing i would advise if you are going to do this i would probably count the amount of threads on each side um you sh it should match so whatever's on the one side should be on the other side and then obviously put it back to where it was when you started so that you can obviously just basically got some sort of a reference if you do change these ball joints i would strongly advise um obviously resetting up the tracking or steering just to make sure it's in the true position so um right we'll uh, go from there so if basically now if you're ready if you've checked your wheel bearings your kingpins obviously your track rod ends everything's all good and or you've done all them repairs and you're happy remember check out my previous videos for any of that information um, the other thing they always say is to make sure your tire pressures are up to pressure um, because we are going to measure off the tires and if you've got two different pressures then what's going to happen is going to give you a false reading um, so what we're actually going to do first of all is I want to put the steering shaft in the center position now you could look from behind the bike and just kind of hold the handlebars straight but what i thought is basically is to look dead straight in the center and basically put this arm as you can see as it turns it moves so i'm just going to put it in the middle by eye so i'm happy with that it's not 
far off there so we're going to set it pretty much straight i'm going to walk i'll walk around now and just have a look at it from behind just to make sure the steering wheel the handlebars look straight and go from there right so i'm happy um steering but the sorry steering the handlebars look pretty straight to me so i'm pretty happy with that um now if i pull this back um obviously i show you you can actually see this wheel here is off on quite an angle and so is this one so you can actually see that when you're going straight in this quad um, you're not actually going straight the handlebars would probably be turned a little bit so um, we're gonna have to sort this out and obviously um, set up the toe in so I'll just uh, what we'll do first we'll set up the toe in um, so there's supposed to be a four mil toe in at the front of the actual wheel so when you've got your two wheels basically you should have a shorter distance by four mil at the top or the front to the back so basically your two wheels should slightly point towards each other but i mean ever so slightly and the reason for this is just like in a car and um, you have exactly the same thing when you drive in a car and you come around a corner and you let go of the steering wheel the steering wheel will always go will always automatically go straight and that's because there's a slight toe in on the wheel so the whole point of this is when you let go of them handlebars for any reason or if you you know come out of a corner and you kind of just take the weight off the handlebars they should naturally go straight and so that's what you need is a four mil toe in so what we're going to do we're going to set the toe and then we're going to adjust it to bring the wheels straight so the first thing we're going to do is do this toe um, and then we'll go from there what we're going to do here now is basically we're going to measure from the nobles on the tire now if i just bring the camera across on your tire you do have a center nobble so as you can see here, if you've got obviously aftermarket tires or different tires, it's going to be a bit different. You can see that lean on the tire now. Um, so basically you've got this center line. You can just about see it down the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure from the outside of this nobble. Obviously not the next ones, which are offset. I'm going to do the center one and I'm going to measure from this one to this, obviously on the front of the tire so obviously because i've got it stacked up it's going to be on the top and i'm going to do the back of the tire and i'm going to compare and what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust it until these two basically these there's four mil closer on the top to the bottom so let me just set the camera up right then so if i measure now across the front um obviously if your quad was on the floor this would be the front um so i'm going to go from there to there now we've got 49 centimeters 0.2 so 49.2 and if we measure across the bottom we've got 48.1 so we've actually got 11 mil toe out so basically where these wheels are meant to be towing in they're actually towing out which is the wrong way so we actually need them to tow in so what we're gonna have to do is adjust that from 11 mil to obviously our um our obviously more in so what i'm actually going to do is because obviously i've got my steering set pretty much straight um so what i'm going to do now is obviously i know this one is leaning this way because obviously the angle i can see the angle is on um so what i'm going to do i'm going to adjust this one in towards it um, and hope that it brings it back into line i'm going to set it obviously the four mil difference and then um, we'll see where it sits then as in for dead straight we'll have to do another measurement then to obviously get it in the right place so um yeah what i'm going to do um is obviously we've got uh, as i explained before we have two ball joints with obviously two locking nuts either side of this big center nut so i'll just bring the camera in a bit more what i'm going to do is obviously undo the nuts now you've got to remember the one is left hand and the one is right hand so in this case now it depends on who's assembled your quad in the past so obviously which way around it could be so um be a little bit careful um, what you can do is look at the threads. Um, I can see here now that I need to turn this clockwise or obviously as you would normally tighten for it to undo because of the way the threads are. So I'm just going to pull that now. So there we go. So I'm going to just give that a bit of a wind. Um, obviously, I'm going to be lengthening this rod to bring the wheel, obviously bring the bottom out and bring the top closer or the front closer in. Um, so I don't need to wind the nut all the way back. I just wind him off a little bit. And then just inside here, there's another nut so i know that's left hand thread so this side's going to be right hand thread so i'm just gonna crack oh she's a bit tight this one there you go so crack that off 
So once I've cracked them two nuts off, I can go ahead and start adjusting. So obviously, as you can see, by turning this that way, is obviously adjusting. And if I bring the camera out, you can see as I adjust the rod, you can see the wheel turning. So I'm just gonna leave that spanner there for a second. I'll grab my tape measure. Now, again, I've given it a couple of winds. I haven't gone a lot but we'll just go there and there so we're 48.3 there so that's 483 in mil i probably should have done this in mil to start with sorry guys so i'll do this in mil makes it a bit easier so 483 and then on the bottom which is this noble here which i if i can get it hook on and this knob here, uh, we're about four. Oh, we're about four eighty. Four eighty eight. So we're four eighty eight. So look at that. Just with a couple of little wines, um, we've gone. We've actually gone. The, we've gone the other way so you are surprising how little you have to turn this to go so we've actually gone a little bit over our four mil so I'm just gonna turn it which way you know I'll just turn it a little bit the other way and then we'll check it again so tape measure across the top or bottom of course uh, oh. 484 and then across the bottom or across the back uh, 4, about 40, oh, that's about 487 isn't it so 487 so that little bit of a turn there has gone a mill either side which is God, I tell you what, three mil. It's actually, if you read the manual, I think it says it's anywhere between five and a half mil and two and a half mil. I'm gonna go ahead now and just lock off um, the nut. I'm just gonna wind the nuts down. Right, so that's all set up there now, nice. Now, the, what we gotta do, we've obviously got our toe in now, lovely. So what we're gonna look at now is looking at obviously putting the handlebars in the straight on position so um, as you can see again we're looking in the middle make sure this is still central obviously it could have moved while we were adjusting it but it doesn't matter because as long as you get their measurements four mil toe in it doesn't really matter really as long as long as it's got four mil toe in on the front so what we're going to do we're going to measure from the frame now i've got a tape measure here with a little magnet on the end so it's a fantastic little thing just stick that to the frame and we're going to measure to the center nozzle. so i'm going to go the outside of the center nozzle um, over here so uh, 178 so that's 178 and the other side is oh let's turn the wheel is 190 so so as you can see she is definitely steering that way a bit um, because obviously she's a lot shorter on this side longer on this side so what we're going to do now is we're basically going to um, lengthen this side to bring this wheel over and we're going to obviously shorten this side to obviously bring this side in and we're going to bring it more true the next thing we're going to do is crack off all of the obviously adjustment nuts now there's four nuts on either end of this center kind of boss that you adjust for the shaft um, I don't really know what to call it it's kind of like a track rod but it's just like a big nut with two opposite threads in so uh, make sure you obviously look at your thread to see which way so obviously this one by here I can see now it needs to be turned upwards so I've done that one and obviously the opposite nut because it's the opposite thread um, you turn it the same way so again turn that up and we'll undo that one now we are actually oops 
don't want to turn that keep that where it is for now uh, we're lengthening this side so obviously we don't need to worry about backing the nuts off too much but because we're shortening this side we're going to have to obviously wind the nuts back far enough for the adjustment so again uh, i'm going to obviously look which way the threads are now um that's that one obviously someone could have put on these these rods on either way around so uh, make sure you uh measure or have a good look at the threads to make sure you're turning them the right way um, so i'm just going to back this in and that out the way a bit more right now a nice little bit of easy math obviously we've got 187 mil here and we've got 190 here so obviously we're 12 mil out um we're going to have to go six mil out on this side and six mil in on this side. So that's probably the easiest way of kind of doing it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just line this up now with the knob all, and I want to go six mil out. So I want to go from 178 to 184. Well, um, you can pretty much turn this by hand um, and then just keep checking. I want to go to 184. So that's about 182 and then just a little bit too too much and that's about it in my opinion so i'm just gonna turn these nuts back against it lock them off and there we go that's our side locked off and we're 190, so 190, so we take six off there, and we drop that down, and then that'll be 184 as well. So turn this in. That looks about it to me. Just check it. 184 so it'll bang on just recheck this side 184 so go ahead and tighten that nut up right so the last thing we're going to do is just check the toe in um, oh. It's near as damn it, I gotta be honest. So we've got our four mil toe in across the top. Uh, we got our, uh, obviously, track in now. We've got the same distance either side with the handlebars in the straight ahead position. It's all nice and tight and locked up and uh, it's ready to go. Oh, so there we have it. Nice and straight looking quite true i gotta be honest i'm over the moon with that like i said it's it's not an exact science you just want it kind of somewhere near um you do want it to tow in slightly because obviously if it doesn't tow in um obviously you're right they're gonna find it doesn't come back straight kind of not by itself but it, it's not as easy to come back to the straight position and the last thing you want them to do is going around a corner is them to you know have to kind of fight with the steering so um that's the reason for it um, like you say, anywhere between um, two point, I think it's 2.5 and 5.5 mil, they say, but, you know, somewhere near. Just make sure it's not towing out like this one was and make sure it's running straight. There's nothing worse than a quad that the handlebars, if they're not in a straight on position, you're going to end up with obviously more turn one way than the other. And it could catch, especially a child, it could catch them out because they go in a corner. They, they're used to jamming it in one corner and then obviously it goes a bit sharper and then throws them off. So um, I hope that helps. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm getting really close now through these repair videos. There's not many more to come. Um, and then we're going to start tearing this down, uh, rebuild the engine. I'm going to obviously, it's going to be more of progress videos. Um, I'm going to tune it up, get it all running sweet. Um, I'm 
in the process of trying to source out uh, making my own exhaust for it because um, this one's just rotten so uh, we'll see what sort of performance we can get out of it and then yeah when it's all done and dusted we're gonna raffle it off so uh, yeah stay tuned well worth subscribing um, yeah and you know any suggestions or anything you want to see you know just put it down in the comments make sure you read the description all the information is going to be in there um, about you know obviously other videos and everything to do with this project and uh, yeah until the next one uh, Thanks for watching. And if you get value from this video, hit the like button and subscribe to support this channel.